is Up Close. I'm Stephen I. Weiss. On this week's episode, two stories of personal transformation within the Jewish tradition, one fiction, one quite real. For former Parade Magazine editor-in-chief Lee Kravitz, the free time that came with reaching career milestones and seeing his children reach adolescence rekindled his spiritual interests. The journeys he took are recounted in his memoir, Pilgrim, Risking the Life I Have to Find the Faith I Seek. But for Judith Frank, it was imagining some of the worst possible life changes, the loss of loved ones, that led her to write a novel that tackles the story of a gay couple in Massachusetts adopting the children of a brother lost in a Palestinian suicide bombing in Israel. We talk about her book, All I Love and Know. But first, here's my interview with Lee Kravitz. So you've essentially uh, taken a year and sampled the best of what the world's religions have to offer. Uh, what did you find? Well, I took all, uh, really about two years uh, to do it, and it, I did it because I was just aching for God and didn't really know how to start. When I was a Jewish kid going, growing up in Cleveland in the 60s, my conservative background, I didn't think about God in that context. You know, the services were dry and they were uh, hypocritical and fashion conscious, anything but spiritual. What I think was interesting, you, you went to the website beliefnet.com and You're they right. have what I believe was called a, a beliefomatic. A beliefomatic quiz, which is kind of tongue in cheek, I guess, but it at least gave me the idea that some of my belief or core beliefs might not be aligned uh, with the way I acted in the world. And so it comes up with some uh, suggestions of religions that might be in tune or attuned to the beliefs you have. And at the top of my list were, were things like Quakerism and Mahayana Buddhism. And so it gave me a structure to at least think about following on my search, which was try out some of these other traditions and practices. With a Judaism that has so many options, with, with an American Jewish community yeah. that, has, that has such diversity, what do you think specifically went wrong there in terms of what the Jewish community seemed to be offering in, in your childhood, that it didn't give you a sense of the, of the breadth of, of experience possible within the Jewish well, community? Well, at that time in history, it was top down. Uh, nobody in my youth was telling me to explore, go out, explore, be a seeker, look at other denominations, see what they have to offer you. There was a sense that they would uh, lose us if we ventured even uh, a few inches away from what we were born into. But I think sometimes you've got to let people go away in order to come back with fresh eyes. And so I think the one thing it didn't offer was a chance for young people to go out and find the faith for themselves. And now, discussing her novel that looks at the combinations of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and gay life in the United States, Judith Frank. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict, gay marriage, adoption, terrorism, uh, uh, how to deal with uh, parenting. I'm trying to think of what hot button issues aren't in this novel. <laughs> a friend of mine said, there's a lot of story in this book. There are. <laughs> yeah. I wanted, what I wanted to do is, write a story that would somehow um, be about Israel-Palestine and about gay life, to figure out how to merge those into a story. And I knew very early that I wanted to start with a terrorist attack, and I wanted to open with it, and that I wanted to end it on the day that gay marriage became legal in Massachusetts. And I didn't know what the connection was between those things, and I just sort of wrote my way to that. A large part of this uh, is an issue that every Jewish person thinks about, right. which is their relationship to Israel. That's right. And, uh, and it's particularly fraught for, for one of the main characters in your book, this guy Daniel, mm -hmm. whose brother uh, is lost and who takes over, the, takes over the custody of these children, because uh, he was a real hardcore, love Israel kind of guy, yep. spent some time there as a kid, and then his liberal politics don't line up with, uh, with what he'd imagined it could be. You know, American Jews, we grew up with a really romantic view of Israel in a lot of ways. And Israel, you know, I, I have many people there whom I love a lot. But it was only when I left that and started to read and started to get educated that I started to realize how much I couldn't see when I was there. How much like the very architecture of Israel, the very road system of Israel keeps me from seeing a people that was really very close to me, actually. Like they would be 
you know, half a mile away, right? And I could not see Palestinian life. It was just not visible to me. So I was thinking about um, the fact, and, and also there's the fact that, and I'm not sure this happens as much as it used to, but, you know, Israelis saying, you know, you don't, you shouldn't speak about this because you don't live here. You don't have to live, you know, close to it. And I was thinking, you know, there are some things that you can see close up, and there are also some things you can see from far away, right? And I wanted to explore that in the book. This book is very much about trying to get past trauma in many ways, from yeah. terrorism, from uh, from uh, his uh, brothers in laws are, are Holocaust survivors, right. but also, but his parents were traumatic for him right. growing up, yeah. and, and this and and trying to through parenting just to overcome that, yeah. yeah. And and so, so what are you exploring there? I don't think of his parents as having been a, tra a trauma on the level of the other traumas. I think that he well, not on the level, right? Yeah, right, but even traumatic. Yeah. Like I don't think they're traumatic. I think they're they're not easy. They had they're a very um, achievement oriented Jewish family. They wanted him to um, do extremely well. He was always a little bit anti ambitious, a kind of guy who pulls back and you know and thinks that that might be shallow to be um, super ambitious. Um, but yes, the book. I mean, that was one of the challenges for me is. How do I write a book? You know, Daniel is basically mourning throughout the entire book, and it was clear to me that that was going to be a really challenging thing to write to keep readers involved with him because we know in life that people will take a year or more to they'll take a long time, but we don't necessarily want them to in fiction, right? We want people to get better, and he really doesn't get better for a really long time. And the biggest challenge and the most rewriting was trying to figure out a way to go deep into his trauma and be true to his trauma, to what it might be like, but also figure out ways to have the reader want to stay with him. That's all for this week's abbreviated web episode of Up Close. A reminder, you can see the full episode of Up Close on the Jewish channel on cable or listen to the full audio of the show as a podcast available on iTunes and your favorite podcast player. The Jewish Channel is available on cable, Time Warner Cable Channel 1640, Iowa Channel 505, RCN Channel 268, Cox Cable Channel 1, Bright House Channel 330, Verizon Fios Channel 900, and on Comcast on the on-demand menu on TV channels. For more information, visit TJCTV.com.